Our next book, our next presenter is Peter Belmonte. Peter is a military man, retired uh, from downstate. What town do you live in? O'Fallon. O'Fallon, I've got some in laws in O'Fallon. Anyhow, this is it Chicago area Italians in war, World War I. And he has also got a biography of Father Rizzo uh, in, war, in the Civil War. So uh, this is there's an interesting thing about Italian American history. When does it begin? Does it begin with the immigration? Or does it begin with the Civil War? Or does it go back even to the time of the American Revolution? And uh, uh, Peter's been uh, going back uh, to at least the Civil War for us. Uh, so I'm really happy uh, to welcome Peter Belmonte with us today. Dominic, thank you, Anna. Um, my first time I was here was a few years ago and I spoke about the uh, Calabrians, Chicago area Calabrians in uh, World War I. So today, we want to talk about wait, pregnant pause. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay, so uh, I've been studying and researching this esoteric topic, Southern Italians in the Civil War, uh, for quite a while. And um, I actually published a biography of one man. It's $10. It's a bargain at half the price. Um, so I, there, there have been a few, not many books on Italians in the Civil War, uh, a couple recently, but none of them focus specifically on Southern Italians. And so that's where... Uh, I, I believe my uh, research will, will is a little bit different than, than what we've seen. Um, okay, next slide, please. Now that's the that's the uh, emblem of the Kingdom of Two Sicilies. These men, by the way, are all natives of the Kingdom of Two Sicilies. Next slide, please. And there we are. It's basically those those provinces. It's a nice picture. Regno delle due Sicilie. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, numbers. 133 men so far that I've been able to document. Now, a couple things. That's, that number's small. It's a drop in the bucket compared to Irish, Germans, English, Scandinavians, probably even Northern Italians in the Civil War. But secondly, I didn't think I would find that many. Um, and there, there are more. I just A lot of them I can only identify as being born in Italy. But when I can identify Southern Italy, you can see there, Sicilia, East, well, you can read it there. And uh, seven in the United States. So seven of these were very, very early immigrants. Um, their, their families came very early, and they were born in the United States. At least 30 others, I'm sure, who are Southern Italians. I just want to find something that says born in Sicily, born in Naples, or whatever. So next. More. Okay, more numbers. Musicians, 42 of them. Uh, sailors, 22. So the first thing we know about that is most, a lot of these men, um, enlisted in the ports of Messina, Palermo, mm -hmm. or Naples, mm -hmm. also some northern time, but of course I'm focusing on the southern. They were musicians and they would enlist in the Navy and, and when a U.S. vessel would go there and they'd get a, a free ride back as a, as a musician aboard the USS Brandywine, for example, and come back to the United States. And in, in the case of here, a lot of the men continued in the military and served in the Civil War. Uh, Barber, I was surprised to find 15. I mean, it sounds stereotypical, but What's missing there, you see the other, you know, see the other occupations. What's missing is a lot of laborers. Well, 30 years later, that's when a lot of the laborers um, would come. Uh, next slide, please. So that's a half century, these men that I've researched in a half century. The earliest I found, Joseph Aurelio, 
Uh, he was in the Navy before August of 1837. That's the first example I found of him. The last to leave was Salvatore Petrola, retired in October 1891. So that's, uh, you know, more than 50 years of military service in, in these men. Okay, my favorite Civil War veteran, I guess, I don't know if there is such a thing, but uh, Father Leo Rizzo, he was born in Calabria, Saracina, Calabria. He was educated in uh, Cosenza, and then he went to um, seminary in Rome under a, uh, an Irish Catholic seminary, and he learned English with an Irish brogue. Um, and so he came to the United States in 1860. He served in the Connecticut, Ninth Connecticut. That is an Irish regiment. It was a very fairly famous Irish regiment, so he probably got a chance you know, to, to bond with those guys. He had a very brief career in the Civil War, July 1864 to October. Very colorful career. You, you won't believe it if you, I can tell you later, it's too much time taken up. But anyway, that's him there. There he's looking very serene, post-war photograph. He became president of St. Bonaventure uh, College, now University in New York, uh, Franciscan. Um, many of them, I, I put him just ahead because I had to talk about my calibres. But anyway, uh, a lot of them served in the Marine Corps band, we have at least one Marine here, uh, throughout the 19th century. 18, I just picked a, a random uh, roster there, February 1863, more or less the middle of the Civil War. Um, you can see 14 out of 30 were Italian. At least eight of them were Southern Italian. The other ones I either I couldn't identify or were from Northern Italy. Uh, I got a fascinating story about Ea Pellucci but I won't get to it, I don't want to have time. But hey, next, there's Francesco Maria Scala. He came to the, he enlisted in Naples in 1841 aboard the USS Brandywine, came to the United States, didn't like the Navy, didn't like the sea. So he enlisted in the Marine Corps, he was a band leader. This picture is about 1860, and he's got the clarinet and the big shako. Um, and uh, yeah, he, so he spent most of that time as a fife major or the band leader. Next, please. Pasquale Rafa was another one. I don't know what the uniform is, but it's fancy. But he was a, <laughs> then he served in, in the Navy. See, a lot of them, it's another thing. Army, Navy, and Marines, all three. They would market their skills, their musicians, would market wherever they felt that they could make a living. And a lot of them cobbled together a career, a military career. Next, please. That's Salvatore Petrola and his family. Um, he married the lady to the grand, Eliza. Scala, the daughter of his boss, the Marine, uh, the, the band lead. So that's either a str fantastic strategic move or just a bad idea. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, there they are, a lovely family. Next, please. Okay, this is a letter, this is fascinating, written by Abraham Lincoln on behalf of Venerando Pulitzi. He was born in the United States. His father was one of the original Sicilian musicians recruited in 1805 in uh, Messina to come to the United States in the Marine Band. Um, he, this is the son, also named Venerando. He served briefly uh, before the war and resigned his commission. As you can see, I'll read the quote, it's, it's interesting. What's fascinating is Lincoln took the time in May of 1861, just after the Civil War started, to hand write this letter. Now, it might have been that that's uh, dictated, but I mean, the letter says, uh, my dear sir, written to the Army Adjutant General, Mr. Polizzi, as I understand, was once in the regular army and resigned under some charges, of which you are probably no more than I do. Now he wishes to re-enter the army, and if it violates no rule or law of propriety, I should be glad for him to be obliged in that respect. Yours truly, A. Lincoln. He did get a commission, and uh, he only served for a brief time uh, from May of 1861 to 9 September 1861 when he resigned. I think, I really think it has something to do with alcohol. Um, which is not unusual for the army at that time, especially, and also in the, the frontier days, alcohol was a very bad problem. Um, how, am I doing okay? Okay, now, okay this, is, this is one of my favorite things. This is an enlistment document for Cavaliere Joseph Lanza Brolo. Now that's a family, a nobility, a Sicilian nobility. Cavaliere is a, uh, an honorific, of course, we probably have one or two here. Um, but uh, you can see that he listed his enlistment document. He listed his occupation as gentleman, and he's got his name as he even signs his name Cav uh, Joseph Lanza Brolo, and he's in the rosters that way. C A V. Well, you see, he enlisted in Modern Rifles. He deserted after a couple of months, so the U.S. Army was not to the Sicilian nobleman's liking. And uh, I don't know what happened. I tried to find it. If what they happened to him, I can't find it. But anyway, I like that. <laughs> That's Enrico Fardelli's 
very well known colonel. He fought with uh, Garibaldi, fought for Garibaldi. Some people fought against Garibaldi, but he fought mm -hmm. for Garibaldi, came here and served as a colonel of those two regiments. He recruited some Italians in each of those, and I found some Southern Italians in each of those. Um, but he's, he was dreaded Brigadier General right toward the end of the war. Uh, next, please. And there's a letter he wrote on behalf of another, not a Pulizzi, but a Polizzi, John Domingo Polizzi, um, to get him to, uh, to be released so he could be in his regiment. And the significance of Mr. Polizzi, this Polizzi was um, later in 1862, he was uh, as a, a witness in a, a court-martial case for a Navy guy. It's convoluted, very interesting, but he uh, testified in this uh, case. And someone asked him why he, Polizzi, was in the country, and he said, I answered that I was a strong union man for my country, Italy, and that having nothing to then do, I came to this country to support the union and the abolition of slavery. So that's where I got my quote. Okay, next please. Illinois, I gotta cover Illinois too, as an Illinois veteran myself. We have two of them, okay, next. That's Private, Nick, Private Nicholas Rush. If you just saw the name Nicholas Rush, you'd think, well, good, another Anglo-Saxon Protestant. Uh -huh. um, but no, he was born in um, Naples, um, and his name's actually Nicola Rossi. I found that he was born in Naples, and I did more digging, and that's his name. He was in company, it's obviously post-war picture, right? Company L, 2nd Illinois Light Artillery Regiment. Um, he uh, was injured, um, not in combat, although he did serve in combat. It was a fall from a horse, and he was a musician to begin with, but mm -hmm. He was deafened when he fell from the horse. So he moved to Nebraska and was a successful farmer there and uh, lived to a nice old age. Uh, next, this is uh, Rosario Manzella. This is why I wanted to talk to the, the lady named Manzella. Um, but he was um, uh, from Palermo. He came to the United States in 1860 as a 17-year-old. He was working as a barber in um, Chicago when Lincoln uh, showed up for the Republican National Convention, and none of the barbers, the barbers were all copperheads, so nobody wanted to shave the hayseed, is what he was quoted as saying. But um, Rosario, not knowing any better, said, I'll do, I'll shave the, the guy. And so he stood on a box, he had to stand on a box because he was very short. Lincoln, even um, seated, was tall. And he shaved them, and uh, Lincoln asked him, Are you intend to cut my throat? And um, Rosario didn't understand English. He goes, yes, sir. So everybody laughed. <laughs> <laughs> then he, he, he talked to him about how do you like America, blah, 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 you know, all this and stuff. They took him. <laughs> That's right, yeah. And, uh, and so at the end, Lincoln, um, when he shook hands with, this is according to the newspaper story, shook hands with him and pressed a $5 gold piece into his hand, which is a pretty substantial tip back then. Um, well, I'd take a $5 gold piece now, but anyway. <laughs> so he shook hands with him and he said from then on he voted Republican. So we have a <laughs> And anyway, he enlisted, uh, he was the last guy in my record to enlist before the end of the Civil War, March 27th, 1865. Um, my friend Rich Giuliani would, would call that a judicial sense of timing. So just before the end of the Civil War. Um, he, uh, the newspaper article quoted him as saying he or it didn't quote him, but it said he would, had been on the staff of Custer and he was wounded in this battle or whatever. And I'm like, well, I probably wasn't on the staff of Custer. He was out east, 1865, too late to be on Custer's staff. And who's going to have a 19-year-old Italian barber on your staff? And uh, I doubt he was wounded. I tried to find the name of the battle. I couldn't find it. So I don't know if it was, it might have been him. This is an old man at the time. There he is cutting the hair of a little boy. Um, so I don't know if he was embellishing it, but in my own experience from looking at World War I veterans, they, newspaper writers didn't always get it right. They wanted to put down what the people wanted to read. Okay, I'm sorry, next. Okay, uh, Fajiani was another young man enlisted below age. His parents didn't want him to enlist, so he used another name, which I, as, as uh, Tim said, it's in my book, I forget the, the name, it's in my research, but it was an Italian name, but uh, he was, um, a hatter. He was injured while wood cutting for, um, they were getting ready to build uh, winter quarters and he was injured and he was able to get a uh, pension. I, mean, I, I include him just because I have a nice photograph of him. And, you know. Next, what do I have next? Okay, I don't think this is, I made a mistake. I don't know that that's really a picture of him. I think it might be his son. But, regardless, and I'll fig figure that out and correct that. But Nunzio Finelli was from Naples 
He's another guy enlisted and came over on the Navy, but then he enlisted in the Army. He was badly wounded. He was best cook in the Army, is what it was said. He was badly wounded at the Battle of Cedar Mountain in 1862. The bullet entered about here, the base of his nose, went through the roof of his mouth, and lodged in his tongue. Um, and he was discharged shortly thereafter. So you can imagine the state of uh, medical things back there, back then. He suffered from this the, his whole life. And he was a chef, so that's you know a hard thing to uh, to recover. But he became a very famous chef in Philadelphia, Philadelphia Union League, um, and he was very famous for that. And um, but he was famous for making oysters finelli. And at one point, he made nine thousand oysters for uh, I forget which general, General Banks, Nathan Nathaniel Banks, thank you, in early uh, 1862 before he was wounded, and uh, he was called the best cook in the army. Who do I have next? I'm sorry, I'm running out of steam here. Uh, another, I include him just because uh, I have a picture of him. <laughs> but uh, he was he was cited for bravery. Uh, let me see what. Born in 1840 this, in Boston, so he was the son of a native of Palermo. Who uh, that native uh, Joseph <coughs> Modica had a fascinating history too. But I, I won't go into that. He was brevet and a captain. This man, Anthony Modica, uh, Joseph Anthony Modica. He was. Uh, for gallant and meritorious service and conduct mm. before the enemy in uh, Petersburg, he was in Petersburg, Virginia. He was breveted, and I think I'm probably not going. How many? What do I got? About a minute. <clears throat> All right, one more. Okay, this is Ian Pellucci, military history. Um, the first guy, his son, the first guy served uh, all the, those times. He finally retired in 1890. His son Samuel was in the Marine Corps. He listed as a, a young man. He died on active duty. One of Samuel's sons, John Usadora, was the first U.S. Navy sailor killed in action in World War I. It was just before we, uh, actually just days before we entered World War I, but he's credited with being the first. And another of Samuel's son, William Anthony, was killed in action in the U.S. Army during World War I. Another one of Antonio's, I hope you can figure out how he did that, Isidore, uh, he enlisted in the Marine Corps as a boy. So there's two young other, Samuel and Isidore, Enlisted as a boy, and that was their rank. They enlisted like age 10 or 12 as a boy, and they would play the fife or the drum. Uh, okay, one more picture, and then we'll be done. That's I wanted to honor uh, John Isidore Apolucci, first, uh, he's the grandson of, of the Apolucci I'm actually talking about, but he's the first sailor killed, uh, U.S. sailor killed during World War I. Okay, with that, I conclude, <laughs> and that's yeah. it. Sources. Yeah. What sources did you use for all this material? I'm, I'm going to set aside the, the collaborator priest because I did much more research on him. But so far it's been, I get a, mo, almost all of it, not all of it.